So good morning to all of you. <clears throat> Welcome to our Tuesday session. We just heard the song, In Quiet I Receive God's Word Today. In quiet. We have to be quiet. We have to be still. If you've ever known someone who when you're trying to explain something to them or someone else, they, their mouth is moving constantly, like our minds are constantly moving. They can't hear, they can't follow the direction that's being offered to them. And it's the same with us. We have to be willing to just hold still and quietly listen to the direction that's always given to us, the guidance that's always there. To listen to the voice of Christ or our I am consciousness or whatever else we want to think of that as, but that still quiet voice that's at the core and the center of our being. In quiet, I receive God's word. And I thought I would begin this morning with a passage that I found a little while ago uh, that speaks to this. This comes from a, uh, a 10th century mystic called Simeon the New, the New Theologian. He was alive in from 949 to 1022 in Turkey, so I guess that makes him the end of the 10th century. So listen to this and, and see how this relates to that quiet, still voice. We awaken in Christ's body as Christ awakens in our bodies. I look down and my hand is Christ. Christ enters my foot and is infinitely me. I move my hand and wonderfully my hand becomes Christ becomes all of Christ. I move my foot, and at once Christ appears in a flash of lightning. Do my words seem blasphemous to you? Then open your heart to the Christ in you, and let yourself be open to the one who is opening so deeply to you. Let yourself be open to the one who is opening so deeply to you. For if we genuinely love the Christ, we wake up inside Christ's body, where our entire body, every hidden part of it, is realized in joy as Christ. And that makes us utterly real. And everything that is hurt, everything that seemed to us dark and harsh, shameful, maimed, ugly, irreparable, or irreparably damaged, is in Christ transformed, is recognized as whole, as lovely, and radiant in the light of Christ. We awaken as the beloved in every part of who we are. Now, once again, we could substitute a number of different words for the word Christ here if we want, but the point is, is that when we fully surrender, when we deeply listen, when we hold still and allow that energy, that light to enfold us, we become or realize, rather, that we are and have always been that light, that Christ, that holiness. I've always been that, but I have to hold still in order to know that. So all we're really allowing the experience is to realize who and what we've always been, the Christ, the I am, the first, the last, the eternal, whatever words you want to use, the words ultimately just fade away. But I thought I would begin with that beautiful passage from Simeon, the New Theologian. 
And as we know, I, and hopefully you are as well, are celebrating the release of this book that I was working on in the anchor hole, The Impersonal Light. I hope many of you have already gotten the uh, your copy. I, I looked this morning. It's just fun to look and see where it is. It's like the 62nd best-selling book on spirituality in the whole world right now, which is always fun to see. Thanks to you guys. But there is something to that expression, that book, that sparks that memory, that realization that we, or that experience is what we call it every day. That's the only reason we're here, to have that experience sparked and then to follow that, to follow that fire. And whether it takes a book or whatever, it could just take a smile to spark that within us. But that's the only thing we're really here to do is to surrender into that spark, which then leads to that flame, which then ignites a whole fire within us. And I thought I would just every day this week pick just a few lines, maybe one paragraph from that book, and we'll go more deeply into it. So let me go ahead and I'll share the screen on the one that we're going to share today. Okay, so I'll read this once, and then we'll, we'll go back and see where it takes us. Now, I want you to remember, before we start reading this, who it is that's speaking. It is you, of course. It's you, the truth of who you are, speaking to who you have thought yourself to be, thought yourself into being. So the truth of you, your own I am consciousness, Speaking directly to you. Okay, so here we go. When you choose to see through my eyes, everything will appear as it has always been. Everything will appear as it has always been. This is the... This is one of the easiest lessons you will ever learn, but it begins with a very difficult step, realizing that, until now, you have not seen anything. It would be the same as saying that everything you saw in your sleeping dream was never real, and therefore was never really seen at all. And yet, you never questioned the reality of what you looked upon while you were asleep. It's only when you wake up and look back that you realize there's another world waiting to be seen. And the same is true when you open your spiritual eyes and finally recognize the world I am seen when you finally recognize the world I am seeing, and that this is the real world that you have always known. Very simple and very direct. When you choose to see through the eyes of your I am consciousness, to see what is true, what is real, you'll see them as everything as it has always been, rather than how you made it in your mind, to justify who you thought you were. Because that's all we do in our split consciousness. We see what we want to see in order to justify who we think we are, as opposed to seeing what is really there. And what is really there in every situation is me. But not the me that I've claimed, the me that is seen by God, the me that is true who I really am. I am constantly either projecting the truth of who I am or the unreality of who I am. And I'm going to project the unreality of who I am until I relax, just relax, and allow the truth to be seen, the truth to be extended. You see, the ego projects while the soul or the I am within us extends. There's a big difference. Until I'm willing to see what is real, I'm projecting 
an illusory idea onto every like I'm, I'm projecting a mask onto Jai or onto Bonnie or onto anyone else. Let me take this off. I'm projecting a mask onto everyone that I have designed to not see who you really are. That's what I do every moment I'm choosing to see through my unhealed split mind. But the good news is that the moment has come where I realize that. I realize that all I've been doing is projecting, but I have a choice that I could instead extend, which means to give to Janet the truth of who she is and the truth of who I am by seeing only that, by letting go of all of those masks, all of those separating ideas, and choosing to see what is really there. It begins with the acknowledgement and the surrendering of realizing, as this lesson said, that until now I've seen nothing, just like being in a dream at night. It seems like I'm seeing a lot of things. We, we all woke up an hour, two, three hours ago, whatever it was, and during that time we were in a dream. And I remember a couple of them last night, and they seemed very real. The people that I was with, the conversations I was having, in that moment, I would have sworn that they were very real people and very real conversations. And it was only when I woke up, looked around in my bedroom, that I realized they weren't seen at all. It was nothing but a projection of my own mind. But now that I'm awake, I can truly see as God sees. I can truly see as and what is seen by God. Because that's the only thing that can be seen, you see. The only thing that can truly be seen is what is real, is what is seen by God. Or whatever word you want to use. Seen in reality. But we have to make a choice. And that choice begins by realizing that until now I've been projecting my own split mind needs, desires, fears, whatever it may be, onto everyone, and to desire only to let that go. And because it's, it never gave me what I wanted. It never satisfied me, even though it always promised it would. But the true promise is that if you allow the light and the love that's within you now to extend, to embrace all of your brothers and sisters, you will be satisfied on a level that you can't even begin to imagine. That's the real promise. And it really is so simple. It's just a choice. And, you know, to notice when I have switched back into projection, and you'll, you'll notice it because you'll, you'll feel the difference. When, when you attune yourself to extending instead of projecting, which is just another, extending is just another word for loving. When you attune yourself to that, It'll be very obvious when you're not doing that, when you're projecting onto your brother or sister. And then you can notice it and say, that is not what I want. I want to see what is really there. This is the experience that I'm seeking. Only that. So, that being said, let's turn <laughs> to the voice of practical, the practical understanding of this and Hear what Vicky has to say. Good morning, Vicky. Good morning, Jimmy. Good morning, everybody. It's a new and holy day. We're here extending. And Jimmy, thank you. You described that so well. Extending is just loving and projecting is just the exception to loving. That's what we look at when we see a world. We see, or in the ego's mind, the world we think we see is the exception to our divinity rather than our divinity. So what, for me, I, I was, as you were speaking, I realized the one most important word in igniting that flame of our divinity, of that Christ that we are to vision is to include everything that prevents vision. So back to welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome all our fears, all our hurts, all our wants, our needs, our desires, our expectations, whatever it is that we have been wanting to see and grasping to hold on to. If we simply welcome it, don't resist it, 
literally bring it to the altar of our heart and mind to the spirit, to the Holy Spirit. And simply that's where the real surrender is. Oh, this is what I wanted. I wanted this career, this relationship and the angst that it has given me, I see as the projected world around me. It isn't just the angst of one desire. That one desire brought about the, the seeing of all the world of separation. So to go backwards, to go to that quiet voice and be able to hear and listen and then follow, if I include everything right where I am each day, it's like doing a, a cleaning house every day of my mind. It's like sweeping it clear every day. So anything that gives me pause or hesitation or upset in any way, I include it. Don't resist it. I welcome it. And I lay it down here, simply lay it with my willingness to look at it and want the truth rather than the littleness of what has held my attention until now. And that's for me how that spark gets ignited by making space, by welcoming what I have been desiring or thinking I wanted or needed or whatever it is and simply bring it and include it and not demonize it, not make it a bad thing, just welcome it in as the nothing that it always was. But my use of it made it into something that became an obstacle to my own true presence. And that, that presence of the Christ, our divinity, whatever name we give it, is a universal experience that does come with peace and comes with the joy of giving of itself. So for me, the message today that I'll, that I'll pay attention to, and today is my Mary day. I stay with uh, Teddy and I together, spend quiet time hanging out with all the Marys, that voice of the mother's love, of that presence of surrendering, of being open and bring everything to it every idea of the world, the changes, the not changes, everything. Bring it to rest right here to see that it's nothing, but I won't fuel it and, and, and anymore support it with my attention or my belief in it, but happily put it down into that spaciousness of quiet and let that seeing the vision and the voice of Christ in me come through. That's it, amen. Thank you. Practical. <laughs> <laughs> Practical and to the point. Beautiful. Thank you, Vicki. Teddy, would you like to share anything? I'm trying to figure out how to say this so it makes sense. <laughs> um, you know, one of the things that we talk about all the time is the experience. And when the experience comes, you simply know. One of the things the dualistic mind is always trying to do in its either or condition is get rid of what we think is unreal. And so hold on to what it is that we think is real. But when the experience comes, what you see is what's unreal as it is, as unreal, not true, and what's real as all there is. So it's not like something, the world you're looking at disappears. There's just an innate recognition of the unreality of the physical with the total recognition of the of reality as one with God, as souls and spirit in the kingdom as true. So you don't look out and not see the world. You look out and see the world as not real in the recognition of the truth of who you are as real. Um, and this way, you're not trying to do something that cannot be done. You're trying to see everything exactly as it is. The unreal as unreal and the real as true and real. And that's what vision gives us. It doesn't take away the forms in the world. It shows us that the form is not our reality and that our reality is the spirit within and the souls that we are as love. And I don't know if I said that okay, but because it is, it does require an experience to understand that. Otherwise, the dualistic mind is always trying to do one thing or the other, rather than knowing all things are possible 
in your mind so that you can see what's unreal as unreal and you can see what's true and real and whole and perfect as the truth right here and right now. That's it. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> well, you're right. You, you can't, you know, they're just words until the experience is there. And then what, when the experience is there, it's like you don't even need the words because it's, the words don't do it, but you get it. You, it, but you can't explain it, you know, but you try and, you know, there, there's a movie, uh, I think it's called Kingfisher or it, it's a pretty old Robin Williams movie. Is it Kingfisher and Jeff Bridges? And, and there's a scene there that I think illustrates this where Robin Williams is, is a homeless guy and he is deeply in love with this woman who he's never talked to, but he sees every day. Uh, walking to work and so he follows her every day and and when he gets to this huge train station um, he's I think on some kind of a balcony and he's looking down and there are just thousands of people rushing around you know on you know trying to get to their train trying to get to work whatever it may be and and he sees this chaos but then he spots the beloved he spots this woman that he's in love with and suddenly everything changes. And the way they, they filmed it was that now, instead of this chaos of thousands of people running around, it becomes this intricate, beautiful dance. And everyone's spinning and twirling as they dance, as they pass one another, because his vision changed. Something changed inside him. It didn't really change out here. But the way he was looking at it or what he was feeling within himself, the shift into the experience of love changed everything. I think that's a beautiful way of illustrating this, because as as Teddy said, you're still going to see what you see, but your experience will be totally different in regard to what you see. And you won't be able to put words to it because it's beyond words. It's experiential. And this is all we're seeking to break free, to break through into the experience where, it, you know, I, re, I can recall the instant that that breakthrough happened for me. I, I, was, I was at a rest stop in Wisconsin. I had pulled my car over because something was happening to me. And I didn't know what it was, but when it finally happened, the first thought, and this will be the first thought any of us have, my first thought was, you mean this has always been here? This is always, how, how could I not have seen this? It's always been right here. Because that's the truth. It's always been right here. But we have to have that breakthrough moment into the experience in order to perceive that. Anyway, any final words from either Teddy or Vicky? You know, I want to say one more thing that I saw today. And, and, and we're talking about love and being in the world and not of it. I saw the most amazing thing. There is a Girl Scout troop. And they're talking about selling Girl Scout cookies right now. And they were there's anybody who wanted to buy Girl Scout cookies, they were advising that you buy it from this particular troop. There's a Girl Scout troop that's comprised of all the homeless girls in New York City. They have a Girl Scout troop for homeless girls. <laughs> can you buy them online? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, you can. I know. I mean, I wanted to cry when I heard that, you know, like. Yeah. You know, if anyone finds the link, please pass it on to us so we can all buy. That's a wonderful idea. Thank you, Teddy. How about you, Vicki? Anything else you'd like to share? Whoops. Hi, Jimmy. Thank you. No, just, just, it's all worth it. That one shift in vision, everything is worth it. It does change everything. And it is right here around us all the time. That's why I just relax into it. It's not hard work. Relaxing is, is the only thing that seems to get us there and not making anything a problem. There are none. Thanks, Jimmy. Thank you. Oh, the Vicky. cookies, Teddy, that touches my heart too. Thank you. <laughs> we got to find that Girl Scout troop. Oh yeah, right away. <laughs> right away. <laughs> They're going to sell a lot of cookies. 